welcome to Rocky's Car Care. Now, what I have before you today is uh, an air cleaner housing off an early 80's uh, Oldsmobile with a two barrel uh, Rochester dual jet carburetor sitting below that I'll show you in a minute. And what this video is going to be about is um, for you to check and change if necessary the air filter element or cartridge. Call it what you will. It's hiding underneath this top uh, cover here on the air cleaner housing. Okay, we're going to make it simple. We're going to try to detail a few little things that the advanced guy might not be interested in, but if you're just learning these things, I'll, uh, I'll help you out here. So the first thing you have to do is make sure your engine's off and it's not overly hot. You don't want to be burning yourself or have rotating parts, so make sure that the, the car's got emergency brake, you're not on a steep hill, you've got to be on level ground. Um, nothing's running, right? Keys out of the ignition. And we can proceed now. Um, if you're not too sure about how these things work, always wear safety glasses also. Uh, sometimes things jump around when you least expect it. You don't want an eye injury. Okay, if you want to wear gloves, you can use the uh, automotive gloves if you like. They're a latex or whatever. The blue ones, I guess they are. So I'll leave that up to you. But for me, uh, rugged hands, I guess, from years of uh, use and abuse, you might say, working on automotive and industrial things. So here we go. Uh, to get this particular kind off, the top the top lid of this air cleaner housing uh, there's usually what they what is called a wing nut on top of here so it's basically if it's not over tightened or rusted shut you can usually um, just use your your thumb and your your forefinger and grab it whatever way maybe even a couple of fingers and your thumb and then you just have to loosen it you go this direction anti-clockwise like an analog clock would go if you're too much into digital clocks you might not know the difference between clockwise and counterclockwise or anti-clockwise as the case may be so once you get it loose, if you have it lubricated also, if it's all rusty and stuff, you're going to have to fight it. But I always put a little bit of lube on there, whether it's oil or anti-seize compound. It makes things easier. So you see how easy that's coming off. It's got some lube on it. So there's for you beginners that have never seen one of these in an older car, early 80s, um, kind of thing with the carburetor sitting underneath it. There's what is known as a wing nut. And you can see why they, uh, they call it a wing nut there too. It's got two little wings on it, right? And there's a threaded hole inside that uh, you tighten the air cleaner lid down onto the rest of the assembly. And this secures the thing on top of the carburetor. So there's your wing nut. Lesson number one. Alright, so now we'll proceed to take the air cleaner lid off. Um, this one's going to come off easy because I've already had it on and off a few times just to prepare for the video. Occasionally with the rubber seal on the air cleaner filter element, um, they get stuck sometimes. So sometimes when you pull this up, the air cleaner cartridge or filter might come with it. But you can... Either take the whole thing up and then flip this upside down if it's stuck on there and it just comes right off. There's the air cleaner lid. And before I put this to the side, I'll just mention that the inside diameter of the air, air filter, it's a round thing, like a wheel. There's also a, what they call a spigot diameter. It's, uh, it's bumped up a little here and the inside diameter of the air filter cartridge has to fit that within reason. It can be slightly big but it can't be smaller. It won't seat down onto the ceiling surface here. So I'll just park the lid out of the way for now. And we'll show you this uh, air filter element. Okay, I put two pieces of masking tape on here. Um, I'll show you the actual element and they'll sit it back down in there and get a tape measure to show you how to measure these things. As well as on, on most of them, they'll have a part number or something stamped in it. Where it's made, the manufacturer possibly in a part number or code that that particular manufacturer uses or the store where you bought it uses a certain code. Okay, so I'll take that out now and show you. Um, I'll show you the clean bit first and how to check for a dirty one, but you notice on the inside here it's it's a fairly whitish color. Okay, that's a fairly clean part of it, right? That's actually looking good, but as I spin this, even on the inside diameter, it starts getting dirty. Okay, depends how the air enters the air cleaner and whether you've got excessive, um, you know, uh, oil burning or whatever. It's called blow-by. When the rings are, you have leaky um, valve stems or, or valve stem guides. Uh, you get uh, all kinds of stuff going on in there and the, the engine pulls it through the valve cover with a PCV system. And it breathes into here and what this looks like to me is it's not really dirt, it's more of an oily substance. So it looks like this engine had a lot of um, miles on it and the rings are a bit worn probably and you get this what they call blow-by gases and, and it picks up a little bit of oil when it uh, goes through the engine system and, and gets drawn out to be reburned with the air fuel mixture. But I'll rotate it on the outside now, and you can see there's some, some white parts. What you'll normally see in an engine in good condition will be uh, mostly dirt. It'll be a grayish, not quite black usually. And also I'll mention this while I uh, remember it, is um, this one, this paper, it's a kind of a 
a really fine poured, it's got really fine pores in it rather, of pleated paper. It's like an accordion fold up and it's bonded between these two rubber surfaces here. These are the ceiling surfaces where you clamp down on it right there as the top, top lid and the bottom lid and they come together and they create the seal so the dirty air on this particular style of air filter, it comes from the outside, it gets, it, the air gets pulling through from the outside and goes to the inside in all directions and the clean air sits on the inside. The inside of the filter shouldn't have any dirt. It might look dirty, but all, all the uh, dust and uh, debris will be trapped on the outside. So this feeds from the outside in, and there's your carburetor in here. It's got the choke plate closed. So it's only going to be, once you get the lid on here, the only thing that's going to draw from the outside, the outside, like I say, gets filtered, and it's all clean air in here at this point. And then it'll, it'll go into the carburetor, and then it'll do its thing and give the air-fuel mixture for the engine to burn. Okay, so uh, there's some things to watch. Uh, I can tell you what I've experienced over the years. Sometimes they change part numbers or they consolidate, you might say. I found where um, the most important thing I'll start with here is uh, it has to, what they call spigot or fit. There's, there's a ledge on the lower air cleaner portion here and it has the inside diameter of this filter has to fit around there. It can be a little bit loose, but it can't be too tight. Otherwise, it won't sit down flat onto the ceiling surface. So um, what I'll show you here, see it's, it's sitting down there on that, what they call a spigot, or the diameter where the two of them uh, meet, and it's sitting down flat. Okay, so there's two ways you could purchase one of these to get the right one. Now, one thing I'd warn you is if somebody's done some modifications on your vehicle or transplanted another part from another make or, or model, it might not be the actual filter that's for that car in particularly saying, because um, things do change. Um, so the best thing to do is measure your filter, or if, if you don't have an extra dirty one to uh, show the guy, the parts guy, or take in and do, you can measure it, or do it in the parking lot. You can take your filter out of your car. It's, it's quite simple. Make sure your ignition keys out, your park brakes are locked. You can actually take your old filter in, but never run the engine without a filter because any dirt going into your engine is going to ruin it. So you can either take the old filter in to show the parts guy or compare it to one, uh, or you can... Normally I don't trust part numbers. Um, I've had a few instances where uh, the crossovers were messed up or the guy made a mistake or the computer had the wrong uh, data in it or whatever. So the best way to do to make sure, you know the one that's in there now is probably fitting well. So all you have to do is three measurements. It's going to be the outside diameter, the inside diameter which is more critical. The outside can be a little bit big or a little bit smaller. I've noticed in some manufacturers they go a little bit bigger or smaller on here, but it's the inside diameter that's most important to make sure it fits the air cleaner housing where it, it bumps up. Okay, so you want the outside diameter measurement. This one looks about 11, six, uh, 11 and 7 sixteenths. Could be bigger or smaller. Like I say, it's not ultra crit critical on the outside diameter. But you have to get this inside diameter. No smaller, but it can be slightly bigger. Okay, so we're looking at about nine and three quarter inches on this one for the inside diameter. Then if we flip it sideways, I got a piece of masking tape wrapped around here so it would help highlight the video. If we just left it all like dirty and black and everything here, it would be hard to see. So we'll go across just in front of the masking tape and you can see where the masking tape ends and get the measurement there. So you just tape measure it and it looks like about three and three eighths inches for the overall height. So those are the three, three measurements you have to keep in mind when doing a circular or a uh, round uh, air cleaner filter element. You have to um, make sure it fits well. Now the height is important too. Um, there's some tricks that, that you can use for high performance. You can actually for summer use and you want to get a little bit more air into your engine rather than going through the snorkel or the air cleaner. You can actually get one that's higher so the lid is propped off of the um, air cleaner housing allows some more air to go in there. But if you're, you're doing um, emissions testing and that it's not recommended. Um, and also in winter, if you've got cold climate in winter, you've got to make sure the thing is tightened back to its original height so that you can get that preheated warm air going in there, especially where a carbureted vehicle is concerned. Okay, so those are the three measurements. And um, like I say, uh, you look at the thing every six months, say, do it. I usually do it once in the spring. This is a minimum, mind you. I might do it every other month, depending on if I'm out near the car and working on other things in the engine compartment. But... Um, Check the color of the uh, filter element material. This one happens to be white. Some are made in a light tan color or a yellowish color, if you will. And uh, just take a look at, um, especially the new air filter you get. 
uh, look at the color and how bright it is no matter if it's white or that tan color um, and then you can see readily especially with the it's a lot easier to see with the white paper filter medium is uh, the dirt or in this case it looks like a bit of blow by a bit of oil in there um, so like I say I can actually compare this one and you can probably see in your video too how white it is there and then you go around here I guess there must have there was a deflector or something or just the way the air swirls around in in there it kind of missed this spot and went for the other place maybe there's more draw at this area or whatever but you can see it goes from on the inside there going kind of brown on you like I say you'll probably see if it gets really dirty you'll probably see a dusty color a dark gray color so what you're looking for is uh, to match the brightest color of the actual material whether it is the white or the, the light tan or yellowish color so it's easy to see the dirt on these this one is expired it needs a new one if I ever run that car again um, also I'll mention it too the carburetor on this one it's a Rochester dual jet two barrel carburetor and uh, this was actually the air filter that went with that carburetor it's off of Pontiac so the air cleaner housing was different and you can see how much different they are their, their heights are a bit different okay the smaller diameter one on the top of your screen there it's pretty, pretty big there but anyways the height of it's um, taller than the other one and uh, this one is it'll actually fit right inside the other one so you see if you went and got one by part number and they made a mistake you might end up with bringing one of these home without actually looking at the size or anything you go to put that in there well there's you know you can see there's no way that's going to fit right self-explanatory so you have to take that back to the store where you bought it and get uh, the right one but uh, the way to ensure to get the right size is either to measure like I showed you with the tape measure or um, take the actual sample in and if you got room in your house or wherever you're you're staying there keep keep an old one out in the shed or something and then you won't have to take the one that you're running in your car out in there for a parts comparison just make sure you tag it like put some tape masking tape or something right on it with a felt pen what it was out of what car because sometimes if you have more than one car or you're you're not really sure you might get one that you might have had another um, air cleaner on a different car say and uh, so mark what year the car was the model on a piece of tape if you want to keep an extra one that is so that's that part of it um, I'll show you the carburetor while we're at it just to show you what it fits on there it is there there's the Rochester dual jet carburetor okay this one's off of Pontiac early 80s Pontiac okay very similar they look the same and also another thing I noticed between the two uh, the air cleaner housings were different and also this is the um, so let me park this to the side I had to exchange this out of that this 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 bent uh, threaded stud much like the one I'm holding freehand here it had a different offset because of the different air cleaner so that's another thing you do if you uh, you buy a carburetor and you go ahead and you put it on a different vehicle chances are you might have to if it has an offset stud if it's straight there's usually not a problem except for length but if, if it's something that's offset like this and or the length you might have to um, interchange them or use your old one that's that's what I've done here so this is an old Oldsmobile stud air cleaner stud going into a Pontiac early 80s Pontiac uh, two barrel Rochester uh, dual jet carburetor so there's the differences, things to look out for, a little extra on the video for you. So like I say, when you're, what, you, what you're confronted with when you're doing your own car, if you have one of these, same thing with a four barrel, it'll have a bigger opening in here and a different air cleaner style. They're basically the same if they're the round style. Okay, so this is what you'll be looking at in your car. Okay, uh, you want to clean this all out. If there's extra debris, you can get a vacuum cleaner and draw it out with a vacuum cleaner or you can... Um, use a brush and some paper towel just make sure you get it all clean and especially this inside portion has to be hospital clean you don't want any of that dirt finding its way into your carburetor and ruining your engine so once you've got the the new air filter um, element or cartridge whatever you want to call it just make sure it fits well sit it right down in there give it a wiggle make sure it's sitting flat and then all you have to do is do the same with the, the top of the air cleaner housing is clean it all out make sure that there's no excess oil or residue and dust dirt what have you keep it clean cleaners better this one's rusty probably needs to be uh, wire brushed and maybe put some rust paint on there one day so anyway that's all you have to do is sit this right back on to the stud just like so 
And we get our little fancy wing nut here. And sometimes they lose a wing nut, so they'll just use a washer and an ordinary um, hexagonal nut, a six-sided nut, and use a wrench. But if you still got the wing nut, that's all you need. Okay. And screw it down, and once you get it snug, make sure it's down good and snug because you want to make sure you compress the air filter on the top and the bottom seal area to squish it so that no, no dirt gets uh, in past your filter. Another trick I like to do while standing well, wherever you stand is just to orient this whichever way you want. What I usually do is put it at uh, the 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock straight. It looks prettier, especially if you're showing off your fancy chrome valve covers or what have you. You can put it wherever you like as long as it's snug down nice and tight to make sure that you've got that air filter compressed in there and sealed well to keep the dirt out. So there's uh, today's uh, video for you folks. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you're using this style, then you'll know what to look for. And uh, if maybe you're helping somebody with an older car that has a carburetor, you can tell them that uh, this is what you're looking for. Okay? So take care. Have a nice day. And uh, bye for now.